In this video, we're going to give an overview of how to use Quicker Wall by working through an example wall design. For our example, let's say we're designing in an area that is operating under IBC 2012. Load combinations will be taken from the addition of ASCE 7 referenced by IBC 2012, which is ASCE 710. By setting these things here in the common proper properties area on the home page, they'll be used by every wall in this file, and we don't have to set them every time although we can override them for individual walls if we want to, as you'll see later. In our example scenario, the wall we're designing is a cantilevered concrete wall, so we'll choose the first option here to get the design started. A dialog is going to come up and ask us to give it a name, so we'll do that. Notice there's an option here to copy an existing wall. Sometimes you might have a wall very similar to an existing one you've already created, and making a copy gives you a head start on getting your information entered. You'll see this option in all the Quick products. Now we've got our first look at our wall. The program starts out with a wall that has default settings for dimensions, reinforcement, and everything else, so we'll need to change all this. But first, let's get the design criteria set correctly. We'll switch to the criteria tab and see that there are many decisions to be made here that affect how the program does its design. This top section with the building code related items pulls its information from the common criteria entries that we made earlier on the home page. We could choose to override this if we needed to, but there's no reason to here. Beneath this there are many other settings that will control the nuances of design behavior. We won't look at them in depth here just because this is an overview, but it's important that you're aware of them and comfortable with each selection. Notice that to the right here we have this area with the yellow background that contains descriptions of what all these inputs do, and you can refer to these if you have questions. For this example, we'll assume that these are all set to the values we want to use and move on. Switching to the Loads tab, you can see here we've got a lot of options for loading. The first entry is for load case name. Most of the time you'll only have one load case, so this name isn't too important. We don't have to set up different service load cases for different load sources like you do with most software because most of the loads with the retaining wall have the same have the source implied. For example, pressure from the backfill is always an earth load. A couple of the loads do have variable sources and there are settings to control that down below. The backfill loading will always be important. Let's say that in this example the basic parameters of the problem involve having a retained height of 8 feet above the lower grade with a 10 degree slope above the wall. And our geotech has told us that we're dealing with a non-cohesive soil that weighs 105 pounds per cubic foot and has internal friction of 35 degrees. We use Rankine active pressure theory to calculate the pressure. You can see we have an option here for water in the backfill, but in this case we've got good drainage and it won't be needed. Beneath this are some inputs for the passive pressure from the soil at the toe. The geotech has told us in this case to use a 40 degree friction angle with the other characteristics being the same as above. Lastly, we need to account for a 200 pounds per square foot surcharge on the top of the backfill. So we'll indicate that here. That's all the loads we'll have in this example. There are more options for seismic and other loads as well, and you can use the free demo to explore these in more detail. Notice this area over on the right. This is the check summary pane, and the fact that some of the checks show as red means that the wall, as currently modeled, doesn't meet all of the code requirements. We'll have to make some changes to get these checks to pass. So we notice that uh, we have several fail failures here in the heel checks. We'll switch to the footing tab and see what we can do about that. We see there's a moment check failure as well as minimum steel. Both of those things can be addressed by increasing the reinforcement. We'll take the heel bar size from a number five to a number six. Okay, looks like we've fixed those two. The other failure is a shear failure. We know we can address that by increasing the footing thickness. Okay. That check failure has gone away, and we also have fixed the development failure in the stem at the base, so the wall is good to go now.
But if we look at the ratio numbers in the checks, we can see that under stability, these numbers are well below 1.0. So there are some things we can optimize here. Let's look at the footing and see if we can't get away with reducing the size a little. We'll reduce the heel and toe length. And sure enough, the checks all still pass. So we've now got a passing design. If we wanted to have a little more confidence in the calculations, we could browse through the tabs in the force calcs view and also in the checks view. All of the coat check calculations are shown here. To finish up, we'll print out a drawing of the wall that will be helpful for the contractor and then also print out the calculations so we have those for our records. That's the end of this overview tutorial. We hope that this gets you well on your way to being productive with QuickerWall.